to Franklin St. John's United Methodist Church, a church where everyone is someone in Christian love. And if you want to go to heaven, as one of our favorite members, Mrs. Wingard says, you have got to come to Franklin St. John's. Worship with us. We are here every Sunday, and it is always and will always be a pleasure to see you walk through those doors. Thank you. to worship is taken from Psalms 36 verses 5 through 10. O Lord, your steadfast love extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. O Lord, humans and animals you save. O God, how precious is your steadfast love. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of delight. For with you is the fountain of life, in your light do we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. Amen.
reopening. So God be the glory. Amen. Welcome back. Amen. Franklin St. John's United Methodist Church, 142 Maple Avenue in Newark, Amen. will be on Sunday, July the 11th, 2021. Time will be announced. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 <coughs> These are our announcements for today. I got a little excited when I'm looking at the book. <laughs> Pastor's conference call and prayer is every Sunday at 9.45 a.m. and every Wednesday morning at 6.30 a.m. You may call both, and the number is 1-712-770-5005. PIN code is 790-771, hashtag, or pound sign. Franklin St. John's United Methodist Divine Worship Service, tithes and offerings may be sent online using the Givify Mobile Giving app. Or you can drop it off at the church. The church staff is available on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays to receive your offering. Thank you for giving. Wednesday morning Bible study is at 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Church Zoom meeting ID is 823-045-73639. Access code is church. We can contact Lynette Armstead, Minister Walter Simpson, or Cookie Green. Pastor's Bible study is on Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. Call in line, prayer line, Number 1712-770-5005, access code 790-771, counseling. Read 2 Peter, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. The Sunday School Cyber Lessons is at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. And the call-in number for that is 978-990-5000. Access code is 249-680-PAM. Okay, and the scripture is Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. Superintendents are brother and sister Ed and Joanne Matt. The Agape Food Ministry is closed this week, beginning Monday, June the 28th, through Friday, July 2nd. A thank you note from the Scholarship Ministry. We thank you for your continual support throughout the pandemic, through your prayers, kindness, and monetary donations. A special thank you to sisters, Esther, Kendall, and Kia Gordon. Franklin St. John's, God bless each and every one of you for changing this world one student at a time. And this comes from the scholarship president, Sister Brenda Harlow. These are our announcements for the day. God bless you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Can we stand for our acronym for the faith?
care for the scholarship ministry, congratulations to all the 2021 graduates. You stepped out on faith and spent some time rejoicing of all the many gifts God has given you. Remember that God will always be with you and he will never ever leave you. Hide his word into your heart and remember, lean not onto your own understanding and acknowledge God and he will never leave or forsake you and he will guide your footsteps. Thank you, Franklin St. John's United Methodist Church, friends and family. This would not be possible without you. We thank you for your many prayers, your support and your monetary gifts. God loves a cheerful giver and you will definitely be blessed. Thank you as we change this world one student at a time. I'd like to acknowledge the scholarship ministry for their tireless work, for they've never given up and they trust and believe in God. And that would be our sisters, Amelia Adams, Lois Bay, Leslie Bibbins, Beverly Collins, Pamela G, Carla Edie, Lady Rise McCombs, Dr. Alice Terrell Bryant, and Kimberly Weston. Thank you again, Franklin St. John's United Methodist Church, and congratulations to all of our graduates. God bless you all. Darren Boggs is going to the sixth grade and he will be attending Buzz Aldrin Middle School in Montclair, New Jersey. Darielle Whiting is going to the ninth grade and she will be attending Montclair High School in Montclair, New Jersey. Malachi Logan is going to the ninth grade and he will be attending Marion P. Thomas High School in Newark, New Jersey. Kiana Sumter graduated from Old Bridge High School in Old Bridge, New Jersey and she will be attending Lincoln University in Pennsylvania. Douglas W. Brister III graduated from Hillcrest High School in Simpsonville, South Carolina. He will be attending the University of South Carolina. Zion Hobbs graduated from Morristown Beard School and Rutgers University with honors. He will be attending Lehigh University in Pennsylvania. Michael Hood graduated from Union High School. He will be attending Union County College in New Jersey. Stephen Haley graduated from Arts High School in Newark, New Jersey. He will be attending Purchase College in New York. Dr. Cleopatra Wingard earned her Educational Leadership Degree from St. Peter's University in Jersey City, New Jersey. Jada Reagan Hoyle Gardner is a PhD candidate in environmental science at Florida A&M University. She is currently interning with NASA in California. Congratulations to all of our graduates. We know that God has great things in store for you. Your church family is so proud of you. Salvation. 
teaching you. Lord God, we just want to thank you for this opportunity. God bless though God had the heart to give that building. It didn't have it. But God, we know that you're the best of the you are our hearts and hearts. And God, we just want to thank you and everyone that's Father's Day. Lord God, we just want to thank you. And God, thank you for our pastor for a wonderful job this morning to save you. He's the leader of this flock. For a wonderful job. God, we just want to thank you for coming to the house of the Lord very soon. We join together, sell in your name. God wants to give We just want to thank you. We say we want to contribute to this all. God, that we lead this all today. We're going to be for us.
Uh, this morning, I want to call your attention to the gospel according to Mark, Mark chapter 4. I want to read verses 26 through 34 from the New Revised Standard Version. Listen to these words from our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know, what, he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up, and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, but puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in the shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Amen. Uh, today, beloved, I want to talk about the enduring Word of God, the enduring Word of God. Yes, beloved, we all need a perspective change. In other words, we need to understand that it's not about us. Yes, we, we get so emotional and caught up with this and with that, caught up in our feelings that we begin to think that if, if, if I don't do it, if I'm not at the center of it, if I'm not leading it, if I'm not controlling it, it won't get done. But again, I say we, we all need a perspective change that it is not about us. Yes, we need to see differently. We need to think differently and we need to live differently. Because the truth of the matter is we all are in the process of becoming, of growing. Amen. Listen, none of us can say, I have arrived. Uh, yeah, I know you think you're all of that in a bag of chips, but, but none of us can say that we all have arrived. Jesus, listen to this, Jesus spent much of his time on earth teaching the people and his disciples through or by a Greek word, parabole, or parable, parables. And a parable means to cast alongside of something, uh, to cast alongside of something else in narrative or story form, amen. In other words, it means to teach something that is familiar or known to convey something that is unknown, to cast something that one can understand or see, to, to convey something that one cannot physically see. Uh, a parable is a small story to tell a big point, uh, to relay a spiritual and eternal truth. And Jesus, y'all, taught and preached many times using parables. In fact, he, he used over 100 metaphors and told at least 36 parables. Uh, roughly 15 are found in Matthew's gospel and another six in Mark's gospel and roughly about 15 or 16 in Luke's gospel. But, but these two parables in our text are the only two parables in the gospel that are directed towards the kingdom of God. And so one day, here it is, one day Jesus was teaching to a multitude by the Sea of Galilee. And he, he sat in a boat and he taught many things by parables, uh, by spiritual truths, amen. And he said that one day a seed sower threw out some seed and, and, and some seed fell by the wayside. In other words, was, was, tra uh, was trampled over by a foot and, and the birds came and ate it up. And then he said, and some seeds fell on stony ground and could not take root and, and the sun burned it up. And then there were some seeds that fell amongst the thorns and, and was choked out by the thorns. And then there were some seeds, amen, that fell on good ground, seeds that, that fell on good soil and yielded a crop that produced some 30 and 
some 60 and some 100 fold. Amen. Yes, this is about the kingdom of God. It's about the active rule and reign of God. Amen. No, I, I know that, that many folk think that it's all about them. And sometimes we lose, we lose our, our way in the church. And, and, and our attitude would suggest that it's all about us. But the truth of the matter is, the kingdom is always but coming. Yes, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God broke into human history through the birth of a baby born of a virgin named Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. And the Bible tells us in John 1 and 1 that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and, uh, and God's kingdom uh, uh, is about His authority. And so we see uh, in 2 Samuel uh, 7 and 17 through 29 that the kingdom of God ha has a king, uh, an eternal king, and His kingdom will never end. And he will reign on the throne of David forever and forever and forever. Amen. And Jesus will fulfill that Davidic covenant. Amen. So let the church say amen. So here it is. Here, here's Jesus amongst the people of the land. Speaking to the people at their level. Uh, making it plain for them to understand. So many times we get so lofty and we use so many high words, uh, theological terms, and we don't break it down for the people to understand. But here it is. Jesus, y'all, is making it plain. Somebody ought to say, make it plain. Make it plain for them to understand. And aren't you glad that we have a God who knows us so intimately? A God who knows where we are and a God who knows where we need to be. Amen. A God who is not far from us, but a God who is close to us. And so in our text, Jesus says to those who are who know agriculture, amen. Jesus speaks to farmers. Jesus speak, speaks to those who, who knew the meaning of sowing and reaping. And he speaks using illustrations that, that, they, that they know to convey something that is unknown. To convey a spiritual and eternal truth. Amen. And listen to what he says to them and to us today. He also said the kingdom of God is like this. Or the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground. Jesus, y'all, is talking uh, initially about the someone who is the sower. Uh, the one who throws the seed out indiscriminately on the ground and in verse 27 Jesus continues and says the sower after sowing the seed would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow and the sower doesn't know how verse 28 says the earth produces of itself first the stalk then the head then the full grain in the head listen this is about the enduring rule and reign of God. This is about the sovereignty of God. This is not about me. This is not about you. This is not about us. But it's all about Jesus. It's all about the power of God. Uh, many of you are wondering right now what is going to happen to the church now since we've been hit by this COVID-19 pandemic. What will ministry look like? What will we will become of the church? How will the church move forward? How will we recover? But the Bible tells me, baby, it tells me in Isaiah 40 and 8 that the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God stands forever. So why are you worried about things that you have no control over? You see, some of you think that you are the source. That's, that's why things that you are trying to do in your own power are not working. Yeah, yeah, trying to do this and it's not working in your favor. Trying to do that and you keep running over and over and over into roadblocks and to dead ends. Trying over and over again and again. Trying to do things.
things your way and not God's way because you think that you are the source. And oh, sometimes I got to put myself in that category too because sometimes I can get full of myself thinking that I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But no, God is doing this. God is doing that. It's all about God. But you must and I must come to say, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Uh, uh, in heaven as well as in earth as well as in heaven. Uh, the sower is not the source. And here God is talking about the mystery of the effect of the seed, which is the source. The sower would sow the seed and then go to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sower would sow the seed and then go to sleep. Listen, the sower would sow the seed and then go to sleep. Oh, y'all missed it. I'll say it again. The sower would sow the seed and then go to sleep. The sower would sow the uh, seed and then rest. Listen, pray and then go to sleep. Pray and then rest. Stop worrying and wrestling all night long, worrying about something that you've already prayed about. Pray, let go, and let God. Listen, the sower would sow the seed and then go to bed, sleep, and rise the next day, and that seed that was sown miraculously would sprout and grow, and the text says, the sower, he, does not know how. Oh, how many of you can testify you don't know how? God keeps making ways out of no ways. You don't know how he keeps blessing you. You don't know why he keeps on opening doors that no man can shut. And you don't know why he keeps on closing doors that no man can open. But you know that with man it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Oh, can I get a witness? Yes, all I know is God gives us more than we deserve. And that is spelled G-R-A-C-E, grace. And I thank God for God's grace, for, for grace's twin, mercy. For God's mercy holds back what we do deserve. Somebody ought to say amen. I'm so glad, glad of God's grace and God's mercy. No, the Savior, the, the, the sower is not the source. The sower is not the source, but the seed is the source. And it is, it is the word of God. God is the source of the miracle of the growth. The miracle of the growth, yes, is not through human effort, uh, but it's all about God. Uh, stand still and watch God. Rest and watch the miracles happen in your life. Verse 28 says, the soil produces crop by itself. Mm-hmm. The soil produces crop by itself. And by itself, uh, is the, in the Greek, is the word automaia, auto, auto, automate, automate, which means automatic or without human assistance. Did I say it's not about you? Did I say it's not about us? But it's all about the almighty hand of God. All we do is sow. And God alone brings the increase. Amen. But the question, beloved, is for us today. Do you want to sow? And what kind of soil? What kind of soil do you want to be? Uh, do you want to learn? Do you want to study to show yourself approved unto God? Do you want to share the good news? Are you living your life as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Listen, listen to what uh, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 6. The Apostle Paul wrote, I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God. Oh, how many of you know, but God, but God, I'm so glad that somebody said I couldn't, but God, somebody said you wouldn't, but God, but God who causes the growth, amen. 
And so my prayer is that uh, for Parkside is that, that God will bring the increase to, to his kingdom. And I'm thankful that he allows me to work in his vineyard. And this is what it looks like to be in the kingdom of God. And so in verse 29, he says, but when the grain is ripe, but when the grain is ripe, but, but in other words, but, but when the time comes, eschatologically speaking, we see in Mark 13 and 30, it says, verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass until all these things be done. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. And then God will separate the wheat and the tares. Amen. And so then he moves on and says, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or, uh, or what parable will we use for it? Look, the kingdom of God, he says, is like this. It is like a mustard seed. Uh, the smallest seed on earth, but but when it's sown into the ground, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and put forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Oh, glory to God. Uh, that what, what was once so insignificant miraculously become, has become a place of shade and rest. Oh, glory to God. I know that some of you, if not all of you, have been down for so long. I know that you have been overlooked. I know that you have been marginalized. I know that you have been discriminated against. I know you've been under great opposition. You may be asking and you may be wondering, when will change happen? When will my change come? And you feel like Sam Cook. That there's been times that you thought you couldn't, uh, you couldn't last for long, and it's been a long time coming. But hang in there, baby. Don't give up for on God. For God never gives up on us. God never gives up on you. Don't get discouraged. The kingdom of God is growing. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it feels like, no matter what it seems like, the kingdom of God is growing and his word endures forever. And, 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 and know that the Lord is blessing you right now. Oh yeah, the Lord is blessing you right now. Oh, I may not be able to see just what he has planned for me, but I can truly say that the Lord is blessing me right now. And I know that the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Oh, glory to God. Don't give up, beloved, no matter where you are on this Christian journey. Know that, that, that we can't do it by ourselves, but with God, we can do all things. So don't worry about this or that. Understand that God's got it, and God's got you. Oh, he's got the whole world in his hands. Yes, he does. He's got you and me, baby, in his hands. And I'm not worried about, about it because I know that this is God's church. And he says, upon this church I built my rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God's word will endure forever and forever and forever and forever. And his kingdom shall have no end. God bless you, beloved. This is a word of encouragement to let us know that God is with us. Even in times like these, God is with us. When we are weak, that's when he is strong. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you, beloved. Until next time, we give, we give God all honor, praise, and glory. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies that we see each day. God, bless your people in a mighty way. God, we ask that you would be with those that are bereaved, that uh, you would be the God of all comfort, that you would comfort them in their midnight hour. God, we ask that you would go by the hospitals and touch somebody that's on their bed of affliction, God. We know, God, that one touch from you and everything will be all right. So, God, we ask that you do what you do best and bless your people in a mighty, mighty way. 
God, we ask that you touch some young person today, God, that may not know you in the pardon of their sins, God, and, or touch anyone, God, that does not know you, God, in the pardon of their sins, God. We ask that you would touch their mind and touch their heart, that they would come to an understanding of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. God, we thank you for all things. We bless your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh,
Thank you for joining us in the Cyber Sanctuary. We truly pray that you have been blessed. Here are our additional announcements for the week. Franklin St. John's, please join us next Sunday, July the 4th at 1130 a.m., directly following our YouTube broadcast of our virtual service so that we can have a going away celebration for Elizabeth Betty Murphy, our church secretary, for 50 years. Let's send her back to California with our love. Bring a card and include a love offering. We love you, Mrs. Murphy. We'll see you next week. Franklin St. John's, please review our video announcements. Please continue to connect with the church through the following ways. You may join the prayer conference calls on Sunday mornings at 9.45 a.m. or the pastor's prayer conference call every Wednesday morning at 6.30 a.m. You may call at 712-770-5005, access code 790-771 for both prayer experiences. Please continue to connect with the music ministry and their Zoom hookup, which is held on Tuesday evenings. All members are invited to attend. The Agape Food Pantry will be closed this week. Please stay tuned for an announcement about their reopening. To God be the glory. The Sunday School is continuing to meet in the cyber format. The lessons are dynamic and they meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. Don't miss out on the opportunity to study God's Word. Join us on Wednesdays at 11.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. for Bible study. And remember, God loves a cheerful giver. This is your opportunity to continue to give and support the ministries of Franklin St. John's. You may give now through the GiveLify app, or you may mail your offering to the church or bring it to the church and the church office will be happy to receive it on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Stay tuned for more online giving options. God bless you and thank you for being a cheerful giver. Christian friends, the building is closed, but the church is open. May God bless you from the north, south, east, and west until we meet again. Know that a miracle is coming your way.